So in the last episode, we did a little bit of root refactoring, and then we said that we're actually finally at last in episode number 10, ready to start building the guts of our application. Behind the scenes, I made a little bit of a change to the API and added a new field. In our blogging platform, users can follow other users to get notified about their posts and see their posts in their feed, which is what we're gonna start building towards. You'll notice now that when we get the request to slash me, we get this array of following, and these are other users in the system that this person is following. Now we will build the functionality to list and follow new users, but today what we're gonna do is look at getting the posts and listing out people that we're following. So we have this following ID of 5BD, uh, so on and so forth, ending in 624. And if I take that person's ID and I make requests to slash users slash that ID, I get information about this user. Now all the names and emails here I've generated randomly using the Faker.js library, which I highly recommend if you ever need to generate a bunch of fake data. So this is a fake person. You can see they're following someone else, but also, crucially, you can see that they've posted four times. And we can see their name and email. And what we're going to do today is look at listing that person's name on my, my home feed. We can then extend this API by going to slash posts, and you actually get an array of their posts. So they're tagged with certain things. This is an announcement tag. Uh, this one doesn't have a published out date, so it's not been published. And we have a title and content. And you've got another tag that's tagged with screencast. This one has been published, uh, and so on. And we've got four of these posts for this user. It's worth noting that this course doesn't focus on API design. I've deliberately made it slightly awkward in places or not the best API to give us an excuse to try out some different bits of Elm and make some JSON decoding a bit fiddly too. So the first thing we want to do is actually keep note of these IDs to know which users we're actually following. So we've got a user type alias that right now we just store the name on. We're now gonna to have to store an array of these IDs. So if I load up types.elm, we have this alias for a user and we're gonna now have following IDs, which is going to be a list, and we could just make this a list of string. But that would mean that this list could take any strings, which you don't really want. So what I'm going to do is apply the same trick we did with a token and actually create a type called user ID. And it's going to be a user ID that has a string attached with it. And we'll decode the following IDs into a list of these user IDs. So we'll change string to user ID. This way we can be much more explicit and know that a function is taking a user ID rather than just taking any arbitrary string. So now we're actually going to need to go and decode and add these IDs to our decoded users. So let's go into our API file. So we're decoding here and we're expecting the me decoder. So let's go up to that. And right now we're just mapping over the user and grabbing the name field. So first what I'm going to do is create another decoder for user ID decoder. And it's going to be able to decode into user IDs. And the user ID decoder is effectively just a string. So I could say d.string. But of course, I need to take that string and then wrap it in a user ID. So I can say d.map user ID d.string. And it can't find the user ID type. And that's because in types, we need to update here. So we're exposing user ID. And here, we're actually also going to need to expose the uh, subtypes, the constructors, so that I can create new user IDs outside of this file. So we have our ID decoder. So we're now going to change the me decoder. We're going to map two because we've got two fields. So the first field is still the name. And then we're going to map over following, and it's going to be the user ID decoder, but we don't have one, we have many, so we'll say d.list for user ID decoder, and we just need to put some brackets around that to make it a bit clearer. So now we've got that, let's make sure we're actually handling this correctly. In the OK user part, I'm going to say underscore equals debug.log got user user, just so we can check that our decoding is decoding correctly. And you can see there it is, we've got following IDs is a user ID with this ID attached to it. So now what we want to start thinking about is how can we take this list of user IDs and actually turn it into a list of users where we've actually fetched the users. We don't want to do that all at the beginning because then what would happen is we'd fetch the me request, then have to wait for all of those user requests to finish before we could show any data to the user. Instead, what we want to do is fetch them, fetch the IDs, then make requests in the background to fetch the full users, which we can then start showing in our UI once we've got them. So just to kind of spitball ideas, we could then have a list of following users. And this would then be a list of full users where we fetch them based on their IDs. But the problem with this is we then could get some impossible states. So for example, we could have following IDs be an empty list, but we could have following users be a list of uh, some user in here. And that's no good because we've got this user, but we haven't got their ID. So this, this doesn't quite work. Instead, really what we want is to, to know in code and in types the relationship between this user ID and a user. Each user ID must correspond potentially to an actual user if we fetch them or not. 
So what we could do is create a type called followed user. And this user will be a followed user. There'll only be one constructor. And it will have a user ID because it has to have one of those. And then it can maybe have a user. And this could be read as we've got the user ID and we fetch the user or we've got the user ID and we haven't yet fetched the user, so it's a nothing. Or what we could say is a user ID is either an unpopulated user ID with a string for the ID, or it's a populated user ID that has a user. We could say something like that, and then we can add the ID onto the user type alias. So anything like this is gonna be better where we're actually encoding the relationship between the two. And either of these will work well, I think, but I'm leaning towards this one because I think it's more true to what we're actually doing. These are always followed users. And here, when we've got a type of user ID, it'd be a bit weird to have populated user ID not have user ID here. But it can't have that because then this would be a recursive type definition. So we're going to go for the followed user approach where we always have user ID and we maybe have a user. That has the benefit of now we don't have to have two keys in our type alias for the user. We can just have one and we can actually call it following which will be a list of followed user. While we're here, I'm actually also going to add the ID as a field on this user. I think it's something we're going to need at a later date. So while we're dealing with user IDs, we're going to add this. So we're going to say that is a user ID. I actually just realized I deleted my user ID type. So let's add that back in. It's a user ID with a string attached to it. If I hit save now, try and figure out where I've made, oh, and I've left my comments down there. So we have a user ID, which is always a string, but we're wrapping it in an ID. We have a followed user, which always has a user ID, but might have a user. Then in our user, we've added the ID field and the following field. Let's go and update our decoder now because it's going to be out of date. So the user ID decoder is still good. We still need that. Now we're going to create a following user decoder. It can decode something into a uh, followed user. In fact, it's not following there. So let's change that to followed user decoder. So we'll create this one now, follow user decoder. So we're going to take and use the user ID decoder here, and then we need to wrap that in one of our followed user types. So it's going to say d.map. And what we're going to do is we're going to take in the user ID here, and we're going to return a followed user with the user ID, and then nothing for the actual user, because we haven't filled that in at this point. So that's our followed user decoder. And again, it can't find that type. So let's go into types and make sure we're exposing it. And again, here I'm going to use the trick of just doing dot dot and hitting save and then it expose it for me. This only works because I want everything in this types file to be exposed. If I only wanted a subset, I wouldn't be able to do this. But because I know everything in the types can be exposed, I can just do the dot dot trick. So now in our decoder, we need to update user. We need to update it to be three fields, first of all, because we're also now caring about the ID field. And this is going to be a user ID decoder. Let's go user ID decoder. And following now is going to be a list of followed user decoder. And we're getting an error in our followed user decoder. And of course, I've only given it the, uh, the, the map function. I haven't given it the actual value that it should use. And it needs to use the user ID decoder. So we'll decode the user ID, which is going to wrap it in a user ID. We'll then take that user ID and wrap it in our followed user type. And if we go into the browser, we can now see that we get user and we get following equals a list of followed user with a user ID and nothing. Our ID is our own user ID and we've still got our name. 